we finally, finally got some more snow. And we have time to finally test these LED lights. So tonight, we're going to plow the driveway and we're going to test a budget set of lights, that's pods and 20 inch light bar, all the way up to the most expensive pod lights and light bar we could find. Jesse, back them up. In case this is the first video. So we've already done three videos. We did an unboxing on the pod lights and we compared them in intricate detail, mounting, uh, lens quality, LED quality, housing quality. We also did an unboxing on the LED light bars. We looked at the cable where it enters the body, the cooling fins. The other video that we did was on a no weld, no cut, no drill mounting solution, talking about these magnetic mounts. In the back row, we have our budget family. This light bar is in the $25 range. It is a 40 LED and it is also a driving spot combo. So the outer lens uh, LEDs provide more of a floodlight and the inner LEDs provide a spotlight. In the budget light pod family, we have four. You'll notice that's a unique thing here. The other families are two. These are six LED and I think they're about 18 watts a piece. Uh, this whole entire box I think was under $20. In the middle row, we have the middle of the road price-wise. We have a light bar from Rigid Industries and we also have light pods from Rigid Industries. This is the E-Series 20-inch light bar. It also is a 40 LED light and has both a flood and spot combo. And the price on this light, I believe, was under $400. These are the D2 pod lights. They are a six LED uh, light pod and the total cost on this set of lights was $280. And all the way in the front, we have the premium racing version of LED lights. This is the 20 inch LED light bar from Baja Industries. It is their Onyx 6 driving combo. You'll notice immediately what stands out as different is that it has only 12 LEDs. We did do some initial testing on this light. The one that we received was dead on arrival. What? We have a replacement now and it is working perfectly. We also have their S2 pod lights and these are the S2 Pro. They're a higher wattage output. These are a two LED light setup. The set of lights here was just over $300. Each of these lights comes with a completely different harness. To make our life easy, we crimped on a set of quick connects so that we can move through the lights easily. We did the same thing for the pod lights. With the backhoe, I really wanna be able to see well, pretty much right by my tires, so that I can see the bucket and where I'm going. And I also wanna be able to see right in front of the bucket and then down a ways, maybe 300 feet. I happen to be worried that some of these spot lights might be a little too direct, and so I'm gonna end up with kind of a dark spot in front of the backhoe. So do we just test now? We're gonna start with the expensive lights first. Said no good teas ever. Time to mount them up. Time to go to work. Uh-oh. So these are wrong. Need to correct the backhoe. Got that fixed. Let's see if I remember how to turn the lights on. Lights, camera, action. Hey, this side's working. So that's the light bar. Try to diagnose why the pod lights aren't working. So it looks like we have a faulty Y harness. We're gonna do some quick surgery and then hopefully we're in business. Ready? Yeah, buddy. All right, that's not bad. That had nothing to do with the lights. Ready? Adjusting these lights really sucks. I want $1,000 functionality in a $20 light. Dagnammit. I seriously can't even get this flipping light adjusted. Like, it's that bad. Careful, you'll break it. My goodness, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Is it time to test? Let's do the test of the budget LED pod light. 
Now you have to remember this is four lights. I feel like if we only had two of them, I think we might be not real happy. I can actually see a flicker in these lights. It's not high, but I can definitely see a flicker. Overall, I would say that these are good. All right, now let's switch to the LED light bar. It looks like we're a little bit, well, I think that's pretty good on the aim. I would say the light is satisfactory. It's a little bit dark here near me, but that's really where the pod lights make up the difference. As far as its overall reach, I feel like I can see adequately at a decent range. I don't feel like um, the, the long range is really good. So I would say this is more in the not in the flood category, but definitely not as heavy on the spot as I would have predicted. Let's do a test of the two lights together. So this is the budget LED light pods and the budget light bar. The light is adequate. The tone is, the color tone is definitely bright. Of course, we're surrounded by snow, so they're gonna seem a lot brighter probably right now than they would be on a really dark night out in the woods. For a total of $75, that's really tough to justify spending a lot more if you're only looking at light output. So I felt that the usable light was probably 150 feet, probably on the maximum end. Definitely not as far as I probably would ultimately like. The range of the pod lights was probably around 25 feet. Definitely gonna need four lights. Mounting these rigids up to the magnetic base. What a pleasure. One bolt goes through, which gives you the pan ability. It's got a lock washer on there so you can put it under a mild amount of tension. These side bolts can be under a mild amount of tension too so you have really easy access to the tilt. And this is a no wrench adjustment. Everything's pretty tight already. With the exciting stuff, forward. To the next set. <laughs> Lugaboo, you have this whole property to pee on. Why right there? Now what are you doing? When he's doing number 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 two-ish. Anyways. A couple things. One, the rigid's a much bigger light. The mount has a lot of downward potential and upward potential. In fact, it'll almost go straight up. So what we're looking at right now is the D2 rigid pod lights. I love the light quality. I feel like the light is more even than it was on the cheaper light. I don't see any flicker. Now we're looking at the E-Series 20 inch rigid light bar. This light bar definitely has a kind of a dark spot. Uh, it's definitely more of a spot than it is a flood. So even though it's a combo light and it, and it does have a bit of light in front of me, there really is the majority of the light in the spot. I would say this is probably over 500 feet. So the trees we're looking at out there are over 200 feet away, and I feel like you can see them just fine. This light bar will run $400. Let's go ahead and do a comparison of the pods and the light bar together. The light pattern is really nice. In fact, if we look at the backhoe from the outside, these lights have a really good hue to them. Got a little bit of a dark spot right here in front of my bucket that I wish I had a little bit more light. If I hadn't tried any other lights, I think I'd be blown away and super stoked to own these.
how do we break the news to them that it's raining too hard? I don't think we're going to be able to get those really expensive lights done. What do you guys think? Should we do it? On a dark night like right now, where it's raining and drizzly, awesome lights. All right, we gotta get this done, guys. It's getting nasty out here. So here are the Baja Designs S2 Pro pod lights. Would you believe that that's just two LEDs per light? Really great light. Really easy to mount, really easy to adjust. In fact, just with these pod lights, not only are we lighting up right next to the backhoe here, it's actually providing light clear out probably over 70 feet. This set of light will run you a little over $300. And this is the Onyx 6 LED 20 inch light bar from Baja Designs. Wow, that is no joke light bar. This is a 12 LED light bar. This guy will set you back $900. Quality of this light really really shows not only in the workmanship but the wiring the mounting and the quality of light let's add the pod lights now and there we've got a nice light spread the long range of this light is even better than the rigid the smoothness of the light on the bajas is also highly noticeable and there is a slightly different color temperature with the Baja lights than there are with the rigids. The color range might be a little bit more on the blue side. I haven't seen the footage from the drone, but sitting here in the seat of the backhoe, I can definitely say that there is a substantial difference. Do the $75 light setup produce light? Absolutely. What you're looking at right now with the Baja Designs is racing quality light. That's their pedigree, that's what they do. Their lights seem to be really focused around being lightweight, which is a key of racing. It's a darn good thing the lights put out a lot of light and the quality is there because their price is definitely extremely high. drown. something. I just crawled it out of the road with the backhoe. Thankfully I've got enough power to do that, but I've got to get it out of the driveway. Otherwise we can't get out of here to go do things. Auto linkage broke. Oh, this came off. It's barely on there. How the heck is that not falling off already? Well, let's see if we can get it back up the driveway. Then uh, I say tomorrow we investigate making that a little bit better connection. Yeah. Even go to bed before we kill yeah. ourselves, seriously. Totally shocked that the hardware store had the same exact ball joint.
If you're on a budget, give these lights a look. Like most people out there, I'm not gonna cry when they die. I'm also not a big fan of just consume and trash. If these do die, I don't think I'll ever replace them. Jumping over to the Rigid. Rigid really is a pretty high quality light. In the unboxing, we took a close look at some of the things that I really loved about these lights. For example, the Deutsch waterproof automotive connector. That's a win. The rigids, I feel like were very aimable and adjustable quickly and easily with the pan and tilt function. I did feel that the light here was very smooth. It, this is a diffused light. So there weren't really any hot spots, blind spots, or flickering, which we did notice on some of the budget lights. The beam pattern was really solid. In fact, I can see from our drone footage that we probably could have done a little better job aiming these lights and maybe even got a little bit more effective light out of them. This is not a negative about the light bar. It's just more about our application. Definitely has a higher concentration of spot LEDs than it does flood LEDs. You can't argue with the footage that this beam was able to pierce the fog and the rain really effectively. Of course, the quality of the housing and of those other details we talked about in the unboxing just really make the rigid light justified in their price point. If you're looking for something that's really strong, this light is stout. Baja Designs. These lights really are not practical for everyday LED light consumers. The light bar is a serious investment. The Baja Designs light does have a higher current draw and therefore justifiably a higher lumen output. We have to say that the lens is even better. The light usage is extremely good. If you need the light, there is a product on the market that can meet your needs. And as far as their pod lights go, we feel like the light again is very smooth. The output is great. And maybe the best part of it all with these little guys, the amp draw or current draw is extremely low. If there's one thing that I feel like Baja could do maybe a little bit better would be to move to a Deutsch connector. This connector has exposed wires in the back. And even though there is a a sheath back there to keep water out. Water and dirt could easily get inside the wire um, cover or sheath. One thing I noted about the rigid was the downward motion that was available on the uh, hinge. And you'll notice that the Baja has a lot of up range and it does not have hardly any down range. So what we've been doing is rotating the light upside down so that we can get downward range. If you're looking for something that's made in America, if that's something you care a lot about, keep in mind that Rigid and Baja Designs are both made in America. I think the ultimate test of any of these products is not what they do out of the box so much, but longevity. Maybe down the road, we might do an update on this video. What advice would you give to the wife or the girlfriend out there whose husband or boyfriend is thinking about buying LED lights and they're not really keen on the idea. I think a lot of women think that a lot of these things are toys and it might be because we're stereotypically not the one running the equipment or driving late at night in bad conditions. So it's hard to relate to needing these things because maybe we're the passenger or maybe we're not the ones that do this for a living. That's what I would say. Nice. And what's the female equivalent of an LED light? A Vitamix. A Vitamix. A blender. Or a nice immersion blender. Or an immersion blender. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, if your wife's giving you a hard time and your wife's looking at immersion blenders, just... just you spend money, she spends money, everyone's happy. Money, 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 money. Money, money, money for money, everyone. Money. <laughs>